Hello students, today we will discuss topic 1. We will unwrap the paper 1 MCQ for topic 1 that is your measurement and uncertainty. So it's a request to all my students to please go through and attempt all the questions. The PDF of this worksheet is already uploaded and the link you can find out in the description below. Okay, so please go through it and solve on your own and then come back to this video for the solution. As of now, I'm starting with the very first question. So as you can see, the order of the magnitude of the weight of an apple. So weight is nothing but the m times g. Now we know that an average mass of a simple apple is nothing but 100 gram. So in order to find out the weight, we can say 100 converting into kg that is 1000 times 10. So this is nothing but 1 Newton. Okay. So I hope I have tried my level best. Now for question number 2. The number of heartbeats of a person at rest in 1 hour. So it is asking you for 1 hour. So we know that in 1 minute, approximately a normal human being heartbeat rates at 80 per minute. 80 beats per minute. So if you just multiply it with 60, so probably the nearest order of magnitude. So 8, 4, 8, 0, 0. So, uh, uh, that is 4800. So, the nearest order of magnitude is, it, it can be written as 4.8 into 10 raised to power 3. So, this is the order of magnitude which is option C. Now, question number 3. The diameter of a nucleus to the diameter of an atom. So, you should know that the uh, for an atom is of the order of 10 raised to power minus 10 meter and the this is about the uh, you can say the diameter or sorry the radius of an atom and the radius of a nucleus is around uh, 10 raised to power if i'm not wrong 10 raised to power minus 15 okay so 10 raised to power minus 15 upon it doesn't matter whether you take for diameter or radius because the fraction is the same it is two times uh, 2 into r is the diameter so 10 raised to power minus 10. So you get 10 raised to power minus 5, which is option C. Okay. Now question number D. The earth volume is given to us, which is 10 raised to power 12 kilometer cube. It is given in kilometer. And the volume of the grain, small grain is 1 millimeter cube. Now first convert it into kilometer so that we can find out the how many number of grains of sand can be fit in the volume of the earth. So, uh, if I convert 1 mm into centimeter divided by 10, then in meter it is 100 and then divide by 1000 to convert it into kilometer. Now, for cube, it will be 3 times. So, you can see 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 10 raised to power minus 6 times 3, which is 10 raised to power minus 18. So, volume of 1 gram in kilometer cube. So, this is the 1 gram. So we have total is 10 raised to power 12 and the volume of 1 grain is 10 raised to power minus 18. So the n will be 10 raised to power 12 plus 18 which is option D that is 30. Okay. Now question number 5 which of the following contains 3 fundamental units. Okay. So there are basic 7 fundamental units. So if you look at the option now meter kilo coulomb is not a fundamental. So this is incorrect. Uh, second, Newton is also a derived unit, so incorrect. Ampere, Kelvin, uh, Coulomb again. So option C. But you should know all the seven. That is the um, that is the mass that is in kg, length in meter, time in seconds, temperature in Kelvin. Okay, uh, current in ampere, and uh, mole that is the amount of and the luminous intensity that is candela. So these are the seven uh, fundamental units you should remember. This is for the light. Okay, if you don't know, this is the amount of substance that is measured in moles. Rest are very basic temperature, time, mass and length. Now question number six, again the fundamental and a derived unit. So we know that there are seven fundamental. Apart from that, all the units are considered as derived units. So uh, fundamental ampere both are fundamental so this is incorrect coulomb and kilogram 
ampere and newton so first is fundamental so fundamental is ampere derived is newton so option c is the right answer okay and this is the derived and this is the fundamental so option b can also be there in case it is derived and fundamental but option c as of now is the correct answer now question number seven there are sub multiples of unit represented using a prefix uh, you can use your data booklet if you have any confusion in this which one of the following list the prefix in decreasing order it means it should start with the maximum and then it should decrease so if you look at the options centi micro milli so micro is less so it is incorrect centi is 10 raised to power minus 2 meter micro is 10 raised to power minus 6 milli is 10 raised to power minus 3 and uh, nano is 10 raised to power minus 9 whatever be the uh, length or it depends so the correct one will be centi is the greatest milli 10 raised to power minus 3 micro and then nano so option c is the right answer now question number eight the resistive force depend on these three variables c is a constant okay which of the correct unit for c where v is the speed so we have to find out c so c will be f upon v into r f is in newton v is meter per second so it will go above and radius is meter so you can write this as newton second m minus 2 simple this is s1 so option d which of the following measurement is stated correctly to 2 sf okay now we know that the 2 sf it should be very clear now here if you see all the three decimals so this is 3 sf this is 2 sf uh, this is 1 sf um, and two significant digits uh, this is two sorry this is four okay because the number is here yeah four this is three this is one and this is only two so this is the option b question number 10 now the voltage value is given applied to a dc motor the current is also given which one the following the power is equals to v into i now guys it is asking us for the correct appropriate number of significant digits okay so if you see v is having 3 sf and i is having um, 2 sf so when you do the uh, multiplication of these two physical quantity the final answer has to be in the minimum sf with rounding off okay you have to round off and then you have to give the answer in minimum significant figure so 12.2 times 0 0.2 gives you 2.44 to, to convert and rounding off into 2 sf it will be 2.4 if the value is like for example if the value comes out to be 2.46 or 7 then you have to round off then the answer will be 2.5 because the value at the last is the greater than 5 so you have to add in the before the uh, number of the preceding of that so the final answer for b is 2.4 now question number 11 an object has an acceleration given to us which of the following gives a change in the speed so acceleration is delta v you can say change in speed upon time so change in speed is nothing but acceleration into time with the correct significant figure so correct significant figure is how much this is also one this is also um, one object 2.0 and 7.00 so you can do one thing the minimum minimum of them is uh, all the r answer are like this so the 14 will be the answer 7 into 2 7 times 2 which is 14 so this is the only minimum significant figure which we can see in the options so 14 is the correct answer it's i think the Mm, the answer is with respect to the correct number of significant figures yeah so the minimum is like 2.0 so this is 2 sf and this is 3 sf okay so this is the answer for 2 now question number 12 a constant potential difference is made for four times by a student the reading is given taken for a constant potential difference okay the student readings are given as such the student averages these reading but does not take into account the zero error. Now, if the student has not taken into consideration the zero error, the average measurement will not be the accurate one. 
but it will be precise you can see 1.7 1.7 so it is precise but not accurate so which one is the answer accurate but not precise option b is the right answer now ammeter has a zero offset error this fault will affect now ammeter is having a zero error in means it will not give you the exact value so the fault will affect the accuracy of your reading that is option c now this is a good question both random and systematic errors are present in the measurement of a particular quantity what changes if any would repeated measurement of this quantity have on the random and now we know that random error is because of the random uh, you can say random uh, things that happens while considering the experiment and systematic errors can be considered and neglected by checking out the procedure or the method you are following okay so this can be identified and can be corrected but random error will always be there so in order to minimize the random error the repeated measurements are taken so the random error will reduce and there will be no change in the systematic error so option b is the right answer now question number 15 if you see 49.8 and 50.2 are the two readings uh, of our distance that are taken so the measurement is best recorded as so we take the average 49.8 plus 50.2 which is 100 now taking average divided by 2 which is 50.0 now you can see this is plus minus of 2 and this is plus of 2 so plus minus of 0 0.2 in centimeter so that is the right answer. So always take the average this is the average value and this is the range from which your data are considered maximum min and minimum now question number 16 the force is given to us with the uncertainty and the masses is also we have to calculate the percentage uncertainty attached to the value of the calculated acceleration that is f by m so we know that the percentage uncertainty is already added so the percentage uncertainty of f plus percentage uncertainty of mass we have to do so 0 0.2 this is the way we calculate the percentage uncertainty of any physical quantity which is the error divided by the actual value times 100 this plus mass is 0 0.1 divided by 2 into 100 so if you solve this this you will get um, 2 okay 2 plus 5 is 7 percent so answer for the question number 16 is c now question number 17 the radius of a loop is measured and uh, which of the best estimate the uncertainty in the area now area is what pi r square so two times of the percentage uncertainty of the radius so 0 0.5 again using the same into 100 which is 5 5 percent into 2 which is 10 so 5 into 2 is 10 percent option c is the right answer now question number 18 the density is mass per unit volume okay so we have to calculate the uncertainty percentage so we know that percentage uncertainty is always added so mass percentage uncertainty plus volume simple 12 plus 4 which is c 16 percent the mass of the body is measured with 2 percent its volume is uncertainty is 10 percent the uncertainty again the same 10 plus 2 that is 12 nothing to worry about it now this sides of a cube is length is 1 meter the east side of the uncertainty is 2 percent the absolute answer volume is what side cube so if one side is having 2 percent so 2 times of 3 which is so the power comes in the coefficient that's you have to remember because we have to measure each time so each time the percentage uncertainty will get up add so 2 plus 2 plus 2 that is 3 percent of the uh, length so 3 percent uh, sorry 6 per 3 into 2 is 6 percent so 6 times of the percentage uncertainty of the length which is 20.022 of 1 so 0 0.02 sorry 6 percent of 1 only 6 percent of 1 meter so 0 0.06 into 1 which is 0 0.06 option b now question number 21 volume is pi r square h again the uncertainty in v and h are given you have to find out now guys please pay attention so v is two times of r plus h in percentage okay and when you move this equation 
परसेंटेज अनसर्टेनिटी विल ऑलवेज बी एड सो परसेंटेज अनसर्टेनिटी ऑफ आर वी हैव टू मेजर सो आर इज इक्वल्स टू टू आर यू कैन से टू आर इज इक्वल्स टू परसेंटेज अनसर्टेनिटी ऑफ वी प्लस परसेंटेज अनसर्टेनिटी ऑफ एच सो वी इज सेवन प्लस थ्री विच इज टेन टेन बाई टू इज फाइव परसेंट विच इज ऑप्शन बी प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू डू नॉट सब्ट्रैक्ट द परसेंटेज अनसर्टेन इट विल ऑलवेज गेट एडेड अप इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द इक्वेशंस नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू एस इज गिवन एज हाफ जी टी स्क्वायर द अनसर्टेनिटी इन द वैल्यूम ऑफ टाइम इज सिक्स परसेंट जी इज गिवन सो वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द पोजिशन सो एस विल बी फोर प्लस टू टाइम्स ऑफ अनसर्टेनिटी इन टाइम सिक्स इंटू टू ट्वेल्व ट्वेल्व प्लस फोर सिक्सटीन ऑप्शन डी इज द राइट आंसर ओके सो आई होप दीज आर क्वाइट ईजी क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ग्राफ शोज द बेस्ट लाइन अप्रोच ऑफ द प्लॉटेड नाउ वेन एवर यू आर सपोज टू ड्रॉ बेस्ट लाइन वी हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट इट क्रॉस थ्रू आउट दी द लाइन मस्ट क्रॉस आउट इन सच अ मैनर दैट इट टच इज ऑल द पॉइंट्स विद द अनसर्टेनिटीज अमॉन्ग द अनसर्टेन और इक्वल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द पॉइंट्स अलॉन्ग द लाइन सो इफ यू सी दिस इज द टू पॉइंट्स आर अलॉन्ग दिस ओनली this and this is missed out this is also missed out and it is the best possible for the plotted points so option a it just should be like this it should passes through all the points with the error bars or if the data is are um, very absurd it should be equal distribution among the best line best fit line now question number 24 The time period t of an oscillation of mass m suspended from a vertical spring is given by this expression, where k is a constant. Which one of the following plot will give rise to a straight line graph? Now, for a straight line graph, we should know that it should be a follow a linear equation. So, it's squaring both the sides. So, it is two t square four pi square m by k. Now, this all are constant. So, you can say t square is proportional to m. So, we will draw. T square against M that will give you a straight line graph. Okay, so option A is the right answer. Now question number twenty-five. So this is the equation given to us where U and A are constant. Okay, so we can compare this equation with y equals to m x plus c. Okay, so if I compare this, I can rewrite this equation as v equals to a t plus u. Now if you see the graph is plotted between time and speed v. so v is your y this is m x is your t so you can see v and y and t and x are the same plus u is a constant or you can say y intercept just comparing the general equation of a straight line so and that this is the slope the slope is corresponding to a so this is the gradient a this is incorrect this is incorrect now at time t equals to 0 the y intercept has to be u so this is not the case at t equals to 0 the y is negative of u so option a is the right answer for question number 25 okay now question number 26 again which of the following is the three scalar quantities we know that scalar quantities uh, these all are incorrect so option a is the right you just check for any one particular choose any one very uh, quantity which you know that it is not a scalar this is a vector quantity because it's a force so mass charge speed all these three are your scalar quantities similarly which of these uh, the three vector quantities so vector mass is not a vector energy is not a vector so option a that is velocity vector weight is a vector field strength that is electric field strength or a gravitational field strength all are vector quantities Now, question number twenty-eight related to the vectors. These two vectors are given. Which one is the best representation for the c equals to x plus y? Now, the most easiest way to solve these problems because I have seen many students are very confused about vector solutions. So, if x is like this and you have to do x plus y, you have to just replace. If I draw like simple same vector like this and I replace this vector on the t head of the first vector. so this is my first vector x this is my y this is my x so join the tail of your first vector to the head of your second vector like this so this will be your resultant 
uh, answer that is your C vector. So just check in the given option which one is the um, most appropriate one which is option B. So option B is the right answer. Similarly question number 29 now this is Z equals to X minus Y. It, is, it can be written like this also Z equals to X plus of minus Y. Now minus sign we can do one thing instead of the direction of we change the direction to the opposite one. So let us consider this as the direction of Y for X minus Y. So again the resultant is in this direction from the tail of the first vector to the head of this last second vector. This is the join tail of first vector to the head. This is the head of second. Now why I have changed the direction of the arrow because it is minus Y. So just check again you will find B is the most appropriate. So this is my Z. Now question number 30. The two object X and Y are moving away from point P. The diagram shows the velocity vector of the two object. Which of the following velocity vector best represent the velocity of object X relative to object Y? So this is nothing but the velocity of object X relative means Y. So X plus of minus Y. So this is uh, I can rewrite redraw like this. This is X. Y is in the upward direction. Okay, so I will just take it here on the head of the second vector and we will change the direction. So I change the direction like this. Now join it so first tail and the second head. So we will find like this. This is your answer which is nothing but option B. I repeat object X relative to object Y that is X minus Y that is X plus of minus Y. This is X, this is I have to put it on the head of the so I have drawn downwards. So this is X, this is Y, join the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. This will be your resultant. So this is the answer for question number 30. Similarly question number 31, again it's a good question. Uh, the diagram below shows a boat that is about to cross a river in a direction perpendicular to the bank at a speed of. Now this is the speed of the river. This is the speed of the boat. Okay, uh, the current flows. It is given in the direction magnitude of the displacement of the boat five seconds. So first of all, we have to find out the resultant speed. So 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So this will be the using the Pythagoras 0 0.8 square plus 0 0.6 square. So this is 0 0.64 plus 0 0.36, which is 0. Point, sorry, which is one. Okay, so this is 1 so this comes out to be 1 so the speed uh, or you can say the net speed is 1 meter per second okay 1 meter per second now displacement is nothing we have find out the average velocity velocity into time so 1 into time is 5 that is 5 meter option c is the answer and the last question for the day the two forces of the magnitude 7 and 5 Newton act at a point. Let us say this is a point at which the two forces are acting. The magnitude is only given us which one of the following is not a possible value. So always remember uh, the we can have a range from 7 plus 5 to 7 minus 5. You can get any value that is 7 plus 5 12 to 2. You cannot get any value uh, smaller than 2 and larger than 12. So just check the option 3 lies, it is possible, it is also possible. So the option which is not possible is option A which is 1 Newton. Okay, so I hope you like this video. For more such videos, comment in the chat, uh, comment below which topic you want. I will try my level best to uh, unwrap all the paper 1 topics for your physics. Also, you can download the PDF of this video, the link is given in the description. Thank you. Keep learning.